Oh man, that's strange. Okay, so... Yeah, so, so C is now E flat, and E flat is now C. So D is still the same, but everything else is back to front. Weird. <laughs> Okay, so to set up a left-handed keyboard in Reaper, you're going to need a few things set up first. So you're going to need a keyboard, you're going to need Reaper, and you're going to need to set up a new track. So let's get into Reaper now and set that up. Okay, so in Reaper, I've got a new Reaper session open. I'm going to double-click and pin this area up here on the top left and create a new track. I'm going to arm the track and point that track at my MIDI keyboard, which I've had previously set up. If you don't have your keyboard set up, there's a separate video up here. I'm going to put a link in the description as well that will talk you through how to set up your keyboard. Uh, if you have that, then let's crack on here and click the arm button, input MIDI, and then off to the keyboard. Next, I'm going to click on the effects box down here. And in the filter, looking at all plugins, I'm going to type in synth and pick out one of the synths I want to work with. I'm going to use Resynth. That's the free one that comes with Reaper. So now that's loaded in, I should start hearing some noises when I hit my keyboard. Excellent. So this is currently set up right-handed, the traditional way, but we want it back to front. So next, if we click on options and go into show Reaper resource path, in explorer slash finder that's going to bring up a folder uh, and in there we're going to data and then into ix key maps so in here we're going to find a text file it's important you don't modify this file but take a copy of it and then modify that so looking at the file i'm just going to highlight it on my pc i'm going to do Control c and then Control v to paste the copy and now i'm going to edit this i'm going to first i'm going to rename it left hand synth mapping then i'm going to open the text file now when i open the text file it's going to show you all the different octaves and the notes that correspond to each midi key okay so we've got zero all the way to 127 so there's 127 different midi notes across 10 octaves or almost 10 octaves not quite it stops at g on that last one what we need to do is reverse these numbers so we'll start at 127 and end up at zero at the other end Lucky for you, I've already gone through this and created a file. I'm going to paste this text into the first comment that will pin under this video. Uh, so you can just grab the text from that comment and paste it into your text file. That will save you a bit of time. So once you've got the text copied from the comment below this video, you can then go back into your text file, click Control A to select everything, and then Control V to paste from that comment. So now we can see at the very bottom, instead of the 127, we've got the 0 on the left there. And if you go up to the top, we've got one, two, seven. So now that's everything back to front. If we save that, now there's just a couple more bits to do in Reaper to get things the way we need it. So in our Reaper session, the keyboard is still going to be right-handed, um, but we need to just change a couple of bits. So I'm going to click on In Effects here. And then where we had Synth in the search there, I'm now going to go with MIDI instead. And I'm going to look for this... Uh, JS MIDI map to key V2. That's the one we want to use. I'm going to click that and add. So with that open, by default, it's going to be looking at that default mapping text, the right-handed one that just comes with Reaper. So we need to add the new text file in here. The quickest way to do that is to get it to refresh the folder that it's looking at. So right-click on the plugin up here at the top left and toggle selected FX offline. And then next, click bring effect online. And then in the drop down, we should now see left hand synth mapping. Click on that. And then that's OK. We can close that. So now when we try it on our keyboard, instead of going from low to high, it now goes high to low. Pretty cool. It makes it really weird to play. So what you think would be a C is now an E minor. And what was an E minor is now a C. Very strange. And you can use this text mapping for all kinds of things. You can use it if you've got MIDI drum pads or anything and you want to shift to be triggered by different buttons on your MIDI drum machine. You can do that here as well. Uh, it's useful for quite a lot of different things. So that's it. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, then do please give a thumbs up and maybe click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.